Hi everyone, I'm Desiree. Today we're going to talk about how to properly melt candy melts. I've used candy melts for years and they're one of my favorite decorating mediums because they're easy to use and you can do so many different things with them. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our videos. First, we should probably start with the most basic question. What are candy melts? Candy melts are a confectionery coating. They have a similar look, taste, and texture to chocolate and act a lot like chocolate too, but they're not chocolate. So what makes them different? Chocolate requires a process called tempering, so it sets up glossy and has a nice snap when breaking it into pieces. This process requires temperature precision and a candy thermometer to do it properly. Candy melts do not require the tempering process, which makes them easy to use for everyone, especially beginners. Candy melts also come in a variety of colors and flavors, which makes them perfect for decorating. Candy melts are often known for covering cake pops, but you can also use them to dip treats, mold candy, pipe and drizzle decorations, and even make ganache. Most of these projects will start with melting your candy melts, so let's talk about melting. There are three different ways you can melt candy melts candy. Use a microwave, a double boiler, or a melting pot. All of these methods work great, but no matter which method you choose, remember these two rules. The first, do not overheat. Candy melts can get overheated and scorched. Gentle, consistent heat is best. And number two, avoid water. Moisture from water makes candy melts seize, meaning that they'll clump up. Always make sure all bowls and utensils are dry, and avoid using tools that can retain moisture, such as a wooden spoon. Using the microwave to melt candy melts is quick and easy. It's a good option for when you want to heat them fast or melt small amounts. Using the microwave also avoids the risk of moisture or water affecting your melts. However, the microwave method is prone to scorching candy, so you'll need to watch them closely and check them frequently. Remember, all microwaves perform differently, and in general, the higher the wattage, the faster the cooking time. You can melt your candy melts in a Wilton decorating bag, they're microwave safe, or a microwave safe bowl. Glass or ceramic bowls are a good choice. All of these materials retain heat well, so you can count on some residual heat to keep melting the candy melts. If you can, adjust your microwave to half power or less, and that will give you the best results when melting. All microwaves are different, so check your manual if you have it and are unsure how to change your power settings. One thing to keep in mind when melting candy melts in the microwave is that you're actually trying to use the residual heat from your bowl or decorating bag to gently melt the candy melts rather than the microwave's heat. It's best to microwave in short bursts of 15 to 30 seconds to avoid overheating them. In between each round of heating, stir or knead your candy melts even if they still look solid. Looks can be deceiving. Sometimes the surface of candy melts will look solid, but the center has started to melt. Make sure to stir or knead your candy melts at every interval. Doing so helps break up the structure, evenly distribute the heat, and prevent overcooking. When your candy is mostly melted, stop the microwave even if there are still some lumps. Let the container stand in the microwave for one minute before removing. The residual heat from the melted candy and the container will provide enough heat to melt the solid pieces. Keep kneading and stirring to distribute residual heat. Microwaving is a popular and effective way to melt, but if you're still having some issues, here are a few tips. Get to know your microwave settings well, especially the power levels. That's the only way to make the adjustments work for you. If you've never worked with candy melts, try testing small amounts first before using larger amounts to see how they melt with your microwave. And if you find your candy melts are taking way too long to melt and you're getting worried about overheating, try chopping them into small, even pieces. Smaller pieces respond better to low heat than larger pieces. Another way to melt candy melts is the double boiler method. This is a great option for larger amounts and it makes it easier to watch and control the melting process. This method also allows you to adjust the heat manually for more gentle heating. However, this method does rely on heat made from steam, which has the chance to introduce water to candy melts and cause them to seize. You can use an actual double boiler, which is a set of two pots that stack on top of each other, or put together a makeshift double boiler using a pot on your stove and a heat-proof bowl. Make sure to choose a glass or metal bowl that is wider than the opening of your cooking pot. Keep in mind that a metal bowl will conduct heat faster than glass and will melt your candy melts faster. Don't use metal bowls that have a silicone or coated base. 
Put a bit of water into the pot and set the bowl on top of it. The bottom of the bowl should not touch the water. This method helps create a bit of space between the heat source and your candy melts, as melting them over a direct heat source will cause them to overcook. Use low heat to bring the water to a gentle simmer, not a rolling boil, and stir constantly. Stirring will help distribute the heat more evenly. When your candy is mostly melted, remove the bowl from the heat even if there are still some small lumps. Just like with the microwaving method, the residual heat from the candy and the container will provide enough heat to melt those remaining small pieces. Keep stirring to distribute the residual heat. If moisture from the steam comes into contact with your candy melts, it will cause them to seize, which looks like this. Unfortunately, if this has happened to your candy melts, you've reached the point of no return. This is why it's so important to ensure that the bowl you've chosen has a snug fit with your cooking pot to prevent moisture from coming into contact with your candy melts. The final method for melting candy melts candy is using a Wilton melting pot. This melting pot was designed especially for candy melts, and the melting temperature is calibrated to prevent overheating. This is a dry method of heating with no moisture involved, however, this method could take a little bit of time. The melting pot can only hold two and a half cups of candy melts at one time, and it takes at least 10 minutes to melt them. The melting pot has two heat settings. The farthest setting is to melt, and the middle setting is to keep the melted candy warm. Place your candy in the melting pot and turn the setting to melt. The heat comes from all sides of the bowl, so be aware that the outer edges will melt faster than the center. Stir the candy from time to time to distribute the heat evenly. Once the candy is mostly melted, switch to the warm setting and stir. The residual heat and the melt setting will help smooth out any remaining small lumps. No matter what method you choose to melt your candy melts, they can sometimes be a little thick, which is not ideal for coating. If you reach this texture, stop heating the candy. This is the point where the melts can be overcooked. To fix this, add a small amount of Easy Thin or solid vegetable shortening to your melted candy melts. Start with just a little at a time and stir thoroughly. The amount you'll need depends on how much candy you've melted. You should notice that your candy melts will start looking smoother and glossier. Never use vegetable oil, butter, milk, or any liquids as these will all make the candy break or seize. There are a few other things to keep in mind when working with candy melts. Like any food, the consistency of candy melts can be affected by things like temperature, humidity, and how old the bag is. Cold room temperature can slow down the melting process or make candy melts set up faster. Humidity, on the other hand, introduces moisture which is not good for candy melts. If you do happen to overcook and scorch your candy melts, they unfortunately cannot be saved as the candy will taste burnt. But if your candy melts have seized a bit due to water or moisture, you might be able to use seized candy melts by adding them in a recipe that requires liquid, like a ganache. I hope this video helped you better understand the various ways you can melt candy melts, as well as provide some helpful tips on how to get them to a nice, smooth consistency. If you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this one. If you have more questions about candy melts, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. And finally, if you make something with candy melts, we would love to see it. Be sure to use the hashtag WiltonCakes when sharing your images. Thanks for watching!